Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plain Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on blue. Alright, so looking over at this end, you can tell we've got a little bit of harvesting that we can do. So let me get you set up on the tripod, and then we'll do a little bit of sifting. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a couple of handfuls, and I have been letting this top part dry. I've um, been letting it dry for weeks now. I'm just trying to, you know, slowly let, let it dry out naturally. Unlike the uh, Force Air I'm using on one of my other systems, you get a better quality of casting if, you, if it is able to air dry. Plus, at this moisture, you can also pick out the little pieces of plastic that may have ended up in the shredder. Also get rid of your avocado stickers. Oh man. But these look really nice. I can't remember who was reminding me, but somebody was talking about fall bulbs, and I was like, oh, I bought tulips. Need to get those things planted. One more big handful. All right, so that looks good. I also did want to start mentioning like what the temperature and humidity is here in the basement. It is getting to be furnace weather, so it will start being a little telling as to, you know, what the moisture down here is doing to the castings. So right now, I'm not sure if the camera is going to be able to pick this up, but it is 73.7 degrees Fahrenheit, 52% humidity, 23.2 Celsius, 59% humidity. And for us over here in America, it's 73.7 Fahrenheit and the percent humidity is still the same. And according to this little guy, it's okay. I will put these off to the edge. Now these are just the uh, rough sifted, so the cocoons and whatnot will still be in here. I will sift that down to a finer uh, level and capture whatever cocoons I can. Take him off to the side. So I'm just gonna kinda do a little bit of flipping here keep this drying process moving. Everything looks like it's progressing nicely. Just kind of start pushing it up over on this edge as I harvest it. Makes more room for the wedge. It also gets the stuff that's at the bottom that's kind of a little too wet and brings it up to the top so it can get drier. Make a gap here, and then I'll flip you around so we can see the other side. Okay, so I'm going to move down the stuff that's not finished, and then continue moving my wedge, backing my wedge up. Does that make sense? Just keep moving all the stuff that is more finished down here. You can see we've got a lot, a lot of worms in here. Plant tag. There we go. And you can see this is less finished than the stuff I was working on with the, uh, the sifter. Just keep 
and the dogs can hear me in the basement and they're barking so, so I have to forgive that they're getting old Lots and lots of worms in here. Okay, so now I'm going to move you down and we'll start working on the leading edge of the wedge. That rhymes. Okay, so here we are at the oldest part here. We'll start digging around, see what we can find as far as maybe a worm ball. I had another bag I wanted the worms to clean out. It looks like they did a good job again. They are such good worms. Looks like they ate everything down to the... Uh, this has got to be a melon. It's too big for a tomato. Isn't that wild? This is not plastic. This is part of a melon. That is just crazy. Feels totally plasticky. Is that a word? Plastically? Pa plastic y? Eh, it is now. Okay. Keep digging. Now I've been feeding them just worm goo because of the potential of a basement invader. Um, I think I do actually have an invader. I thought that I had excluded it when I closed up shop for the winter, but I saw little footprints, so. I think there's a mouse or something in here. So if I keep pureeing stuff, maybe it'll decide to go live someplace else. Actually, I'm not sure how it got in or how it's getting out, I guess. So I got a nice worm ball just around the, the goo and the, the paper bedding that I put in last time. So not a proper worm ball, but pretty close. We'll take it, right? Paper seems to be moving along pretty good. But as far as this bin goes, there's definitely greater than, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds of worms in here. I'll try and convert that to kilos. But there's there's a lot of worms in here, so they've got the capacity to do more than what I'm feeding them, for sure. So just flipping everything up, getting the dry stuff on top covered with the wet stuff, and helping the process here. So that is what we were doing last time. If you look close here, you can see the combination of blue worms and red worms and maybe a European nightcrawler there. But they all live in harmony. Uh, I do find that the, the blue worms reproduce faster um, for whatever reason. I know some people have done experiments in the past and it doesn't really necessarily pan out that way, but in my bins I end up with more blue ones, so at least for my environment, blue worms go faster. Now let's start up the new portion of the wedge. Start them out with some bedding, and this is the prepared bedding that I made. Um, I'll either put a link above or at the end for you guys to watch the video on how that prepared bedding is made. Uh, I put, you know, not only cardboard and paper, but also coconut coir, uh, an eggshell, and some kelp meal in there to help it get composting so the worms can break it down faster. All right, today's feeding is not apple goo. It's more along the lines of tomato and corn goo with some chopped up uh, banana peels for measure. So that's about, looking at this cup, which is 24 ounces, it was about three of these cups. And then I'm going to put some bedding, I'll put the 
old sticks and stuff on there, and then I'll get them some more bedding. I am upping the bedding game a little bit because I am harvesting again. Um, so they will have plenty of, of space to get over here. All right, guys. Well, that's it for Blue today. If you liked the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. If you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.